So let's start the presentation of what is required in your uh, your business report for IS2, ISYS2056 assignment your report writing. So uh, be be aware that this is the lecture. It's, it's almost the same as the lecture, but I'll, I'll cover a little bit more. Um, just give a little bit more detail to you, which is required for this business report. Um, so uh, what are we actually looking for? We're looking for <coughs> a business report that's that's not an academic report, so it's not full of uh, references and so forth and complex wording. You, you try and um, make sure that your reports, you know, to simple simple wording to the point. Um, we don't want the massive amount of blurbs where it just confuses everything. Right? Uh, you, you you try to be concise as you can. Don't don't over blurt it and put information in that we're really not looking for or that we already know about. Right? Okay. So the general uh, structure of the of the report is, well, a lot of other documents as well. It doesn't just have to be necessarily this report, but uh, you'll have a title page which is required by the assignment. The table of contents, and I'll stress this again: table of contents. It's not a table of contents which you where you write and put spaces in and dots and so forth. It's an automatically generated table of contents from Microsoft Word, and we'll do that in the exercise in the following video videos. Um, an introduction, <coughs> which is a, a straight to the point introduction, no blurb about the history of the world and all that sort of stuff. <coughs> We want to get to the point of what you are analysing um, and list the questions that have to be answered by the conclusion, right? Okay, so any of the items which are introduced in the introduction, saying, oh, you know, what this report, let's, just as a quick example, what this report is going to do is um, what well, we're intending to analyse, you know, sales data for the last quarter, right? In the conclusion, you should have the same same the sales data for the last quarter was 20 million 30 percent increase from from previous year so it take the introduction poses the question we are going to be looking at sales data conclusion says the the, the answer to the question the sales data was blah 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 right? okay so in other words your conclusion must be much much bigger than your introduction uh, the analysis and discussion portion of the um, of the of the document. Uh, do not use these as headings. Right? You should use your own headings. These are just general headings to actually to highlight. This is the body of the report, right? The analysis and so forth. I've already explained what conclusion is. They've said conclusions. You can also say conclusion. Your conclusion. It doesn't really mean that you have to have 15 million uh, conclusions. And obviously, the last part is on basis of everything that you've done here, all the analysis. What are your recommendations for this assignment? They've listed up here saying um, you know appendices. <coughs> uh, appendices usually what you'll see is things like tables, graphs, and so forth. In this assignment. Don't do, take my advice, don't do anything with appendices. Make sure that all of your content, your charts, the tables, whatever you're going to put in, is in the content. It's only about 800 or 1,000 words. It's not 2,000 pages of uh, document, which means put it in the context up here. And there is absolutely no need for such a short, short report to have an appendix. If I see an appendix, I'd be quite surprised. Right? All right. So, what's the first first part of this um, assignment? It says title page. They've changed it here to the cover page, which is basically the same thing. It's the it's the um, title page of your report, and it should contain, or actually in the assignment, I'm pretty sure they've probably made it mandatory. Insert a picture up the top. So uh, it's only text here, but you would actually expect a picture, an appropriate sort of picture to what the report is. So there should be a title. Obviously, put the course details, ISYS2056, etc. in here. Your student name and number, right? And the tutor's names. Ideally, put both the tutors. And most important of all is your student number. And the last part is the tute date and time. Right on the cover, uh, and, the, and if you actually have a look, the cover page does not have a title. It does not oh, header. Sorry, 
and it does not have a footer. Right? So there's no page numbering and all this sort of stuff. It's just a blank page basically uh, with some text and a picture on it. Table of contents, like I said previously, must be auto-generated. We'll show you how to do that in uh, in Microsoft Word in the following exercise or the um, unformatted exercise for this module. But the table of contents should be on a separate page and what's missing here, usually what you'll see is a page numbering here which is Roman numeral page numbering. And then the rest of the body or the content of the report will have uh, standard I123, you know, 10, blah, blah, blah. Do not copy this format. <coughs> These are just uh, recommended titles for, <coughs> it's a recommended heading here for item 2, but you should have an introduction, conclusion and recommendation, and personally ignore the appendices. You do not need appendices in here. Alright, uh, and uh, for your assignment, if, it's, if the table of contents is not automatically generated, it will be it will be seen and you'll lose marks, right? So make sure that you know how to do uh, automatic table of contents. So, uh, introduction. Like I said previously, what is an introduction? Introdu introduction means get to the point, be straight to the point, and say what is the purpose of this, um, this report and what's the scope? The scope means what are you actually uh, looking at within the, within the business? Are you looking at the entire business? Are you just looking at warehousing? Are you just looking at sort of date ranges, let's say for quarterly sales? So you have to have to identify the scope of this report is how big or how in depth is this this uh, report going to be, and uh, what you are really looking at is get to the point of what are you going to actually uh, analyze. So it's it doesn't mean that you provide like it says down here. We do not want all the information and introduction that the person already knows. So if you're writing this this um, this this is referring back to the you, you know or know your audience if this report is going to the owner of the business the, the owner will definitely not want to know about the history of how long this business has been working who um, who who uh, basically started the business and so forth he doesn't want to know about himself okay so irrelevant information to tell an owner, oh, this business has been running for 20 years. He already knows that. Do not put it in the in the introduction. The introduction be straight to the point, saying we are going to analyze blah X Y Z, and then in the conclusion X Y Z was this much and this percentage and so forth. Right? Okay. Uh, so know your audience. Who is it? And in this case, you know you're going to be writing a report for the business owner, so he doesn't want to know the history of the history of the world behind his business, right? Uh, structure a report. Uh, it really not really necessary. You do not have to say, uh, oh, okay, this report will have a body analysis and it will have a conclusion. It's absolutely not required. Um, the structure is the structure is reported to you in the table of contents. So the person, as soon as they open up uh, the report, they will see the table of contents. That is the structure of the report. We don't really need to know anything, anything else about that. Make sure that the paragraph is right to the point. Do not make it three, four paragraphs. Uh, if for this case, you've only got 800 or 1,000 words. Make sure it's only about a paragraph long. Right? Uh, so just get to the point. All right. Oh, sorry. Yes, that's it. Now, one other thing about the introduction. Do not put conclusive uh, or conclusions like summarizing on oh, what we've already found and oh, uh, you know, the major the major effect of this business was blah. Do not put conclusions into or summary stuff into what you found into the introduction. Introduction is basically posting the questions that you will answer through your analysis. Right? Okay, and no, no need, absolutely no need to mention in the introduction saying, "Oh yes, I will be doing uh, business analytics using descriptive, predictive, and so." Uh, no need, absolute no need. And the other other thing is, please do not put into your introduction saying, "I will use Excel." Or blah, absolutely no, no, uh, <coughs> no need to tell us what 
what tools you're using, what sort of analytics and so forth, right? All right. Um, so what are the different forms of business analytics that you will have to do on the data or actually perform analytics on the data? And we know now, and you would be harped to death, the three different types, which is the descriptive analytics, and uh, you, remember for the exam you must know descriptive analytics is uh, describing the current current performance of a business using past and current data. Right? So you have to know <coughs> how to explain what is descriptive analytics and it would be things like total sales. Uh, and agents, agents sold this much last quarter. So you're describing what actually happened in the business. So descriptive analytics means describing current state. Right? Okay. Um, <clears throat> you'll be doing these all three of these within the uh, within the analytics to answer the report. And basically, all three of them are, are the structure and the content of the report. So uh, predictive analytics means uh, looking at uh, current and past data to predict into the future what will happen within this business. So through your analytics you should see things like trends, patterns, right? So when you see these patterns you can start you know uh, you can start forecasting which means predictive analytics. Oh I see that orange cars always sell really well on Mondays. So Mondays I can actually say oh there's a pattern orange cars always on Mondays expect on Mondays orange cars will be uh, will be selling uh, much better than other colors, right? So predictive analytics. And the last one, which is probably the most important within the uh, report, is uh, if you've done your descriptive, you know, current state analytics, uh, analytics, and you've done your predictive, so you've you've actually understood that there are some patterns and so forth, the trends within the data, then you can start predicting stuff. Uh, in terms of saying this is what you should do so you prescribe or you actually do you begin to do prescriptive analytics which means varying the inputs within your model to maximize outputs right? that's the dis that's the definition of prescriptive varying the inputs to maximize the outputs within the system so <clears throat> for instance in this in this guy uh, and in your report you will actually be saying if we vary the input which would be oh we need to increase this uh, we need to increase staff availability for orange cars on Mondays varying the input we will maximize the output by increasing the revenue right? so your descript your prescriptive analytics means that you are recommending Actions to be taken within the uh, within the organisation to maximise uh, our <coughs> our in basically maximise our uh, turnover and our uh, revenue. So it's very important that you understand all three of these must be covered within the business report. Majority of students only do the descriptive and some do predictive. So they say, "Oh, I wonder why I only got ten out of 20 because you've only covered half of the report, you must cover all three to get to get to be able to get that eighty to one hundred percent for the report. Right? So all three must be covered within the report. Okay, let's have a look at the analysis then. So in the analysis section, this is where you will be using the spreadsheet as your in your data to to look at descriptive analytics. So you descriptive analytics. Uh, we'll be looking at the current performance. So with with current performance, you'll be looking at total sales, uh, how much was sold by someone, uh, agent performance, uh, product performance, uh, date range performance. Just to say, this is what uh, this is what the current performance of the system uh, <coughs> entails. So you will have to interpret in your own words what the descriptive analytics part was within your report. So that's basically the first section within your report. The next section, and don't mix them up, split them, is the predictive part. So in the predictive part, while you're doing the analysis to say, oh yes, we're looking at the agents and we're looking at this, you should be looking to see whether you can see some sort of patterns, whether you can see some sort of trends. Uh, is there some anomaly which happens on a on a like a uh, seasonal basis or so? Right. So you should see these these trends or patterns to be able to 
let's fill in the second part of your uh, analysis, which is the predictive analytics. Right? So you you put that into your report. So you're looking for the current current data. Oh, I see some patterns. You fill in the predictive portion. Once you've completed all that, you'll go into conclusions and so forth. But here is an example of, uh, and personally, uh, I'd actually say right off the bat. Uh, something that you don't do in a report, right? So this is actually a bad example, but uh, here, do not do this. And I'll just list them off for you. Uh, first off, uh, we're not interested. If you're the CEO of a company and someone gives you a report with an axis and still got a sense on it, uh, really not interested because he'll only be looking here and look, one million, two million, three million. You can change this to six M, right? Five M, four M not interested if you're looking at uh, millions oh sorry uh, it's two cents not interested right so make sure that your axes actually are appropriate for your audience so if there's such a large gap between these make round them off right actually you know six six thousand k right it doesn't matter but round these things off this is not a good graph to present to a CEO uh, other question here is, um, if you have a look at the bars and so forth, depends on if you're, it, it, it's, it is appropriate to have it in this fashion, if you're you know, uh, sorting by names, like you're putting uh, New South Wales together, Queensland together, Victoria together, that's fine to have this, but usually what we really like to see is a maximum to minimum sort of sorting for bars. So we can actually immediately see, oh yeah, that's the maximum guy, and we can immediately see which of these guys are performing better than each other. Right? Uh, as it's presented here, I couldn't tell you from the figures here whether they are, they're not, and so forth, because they're very, very close. Right? Okay, for targets and so forth. So anyway, um, uh, like between these guys, yeah, okay, you could probably still, look, but it, it takes time, and if you if you're in management, uh, top level management, you don't want to spend time trying to analyze this chart. I just want to look at it and find five seconds later I've got to, made my decision. Now, here's, an, here's the uh, last part that I'll introduce to you and you must put, before I do that, every chart within your report must have a figure. And it should be it should should be similar to this or centered or so forth. But make sure that your charts are actually f have a have a label uh, uh, attached to it. All right. Now, last part. Don't don't hand in your report with the text or explanation of the chart after the chart. The charts and tables and so forth that you use within your report. Uh, evidence of what you're what you're saying. Right? So, in other words, you must just explain what you found, and then put the chart in after the text. So the charts and, and labels always go after the text, not before the text. If it's if it's done like this in in before the text, the wording down here will be uh, Kuehl, blue bar, uh, Oliver, red bar. Right? It, your, all, all this text will end up doing is explaining this chart which I can see for myself. So you should have detailed explanation here of what you found and then whack in a chart afterwards as evidence to support what you say. So text first, chart after. Okay. Now uh, <clears throat> another point, point here. Uh, if we read here, as seen in Figure One above, blah 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 blah, right? Approximately 24 percent. Uh, presently 40 percent total size. Uh, 27 percent. Uh, approximately 23. It does not make any sense at all unless you attach one of these percentages or all of these percentages to a dollar figure. Right? So if I say here. His, his target by approximately 24%. 24% of what? Right? Uh, so actually make sure that you include dollars and don't just speak in percentages like this. Right? So you must include dollars and percentages so people can see what the, what the differences are. You can feel what they are. Right? Uh, last one over here um, uh, from, from just this analysis bit. To improve the results, blah, blah, blah. 
you can immediately see that this is starting to recommend something which means this should actually be a recommendation and it should not be part of your analysis because the analysis is doing descriptive you are describing the current performance you are not trying to be prescriptive so this paragraph here should be at the end and if you read it look even just looking at it in two seconds if I'm getting paid 600 bucks an hour I would throw this report out because there is absolutely no dollar figure here it's all words so I'm, I'm not even going to waste my time reading it because it's pointless my, immediately I would be asking oh so how much is better uh, yeah, what are the other options and so forth so I'd be already looking for numbers and figures so please don't use this as a good example this is a bad example but hopefully rewind what I just said and make sure you include what I said uh, you know, to do within the re um, your report hopefully you'll get um, you'll get the idea if you rewind the video several times okay so conclusions as I said previously your introduction is where you introduce the items that you'll be uh, you'll be evaluating or analyzing in the conclusion you must list those items that you're going to attempt to look at list them in the conclusion with the actual analysis or the findings which means must have dollar figures and percentages that go along with it so as I said previously, introduction, we will be looking or investigating uh, orange car sale. In the conclusion, it must say orange car sale was 20% you know, increase from 2019 and the, and the increase was $2 million. Right? So immediately you've, you've answered the introduction question. So it must have some kind of tie-in. Right? Right recommendations is your prescriptive analytics so in the in the analysis uh, part of your document you did descriptive analytics you did predictive analytics so you see some kind of future uh, some patterns and so forth so you do some forecasting there and the very last part is where you recommend things so further actions and here's the important thing about recommendations is if I recommend to you say yes we should increase the amount of um, we should we should um, increase the amount of agents or, or sales reps which will be pushing orange cars immediately you would ask how many agents what do you expect of this implementation to cost right? so you know money wise and what is the expected return so your recommendations can't just say put more agents on orange cars it must be supported by evidence to say if we put two extra agents we will get an it will get a return of a hundred thousand dollars in the next quarter so that is a recommendation not just oh put more um, more agents on it must always tie in some dollar figure uh, and a percentage if you need to of how you intend to implement or how we should implement these recommendations all right, and keep your keep your uh, recommendations to what you have analysed. So if you've done analytics on cars, aeroplanes, and so forth, don't come out and say increase marketing. If you have absolutely no data about marketing, what the demographics was, and so forth, right? You can't comment about a recommendation. You can't pro pro uh, provide a recommendation. So increase marketing because you don't have that data so only stick to recommending on what you were analyzing okay okay all right last part appendices up to you if you want to put it in there put it in there but make sure that you put your charts into the document and don't worry about your appendix personally do not include an appendix uh, and then you'll go you'll go a lot further in this uh, report okay hopefully that helped you let's continue the session with the next portion.